fitting up the back of the car to the rotisserie was very easy. All I did was bolt some steel under the back of the car where the bumper bar mounts and roll in the rotisserie and weld it together. The front wasn't so easy because half the chassis and the engine was in the way. When I did my research to find out how to do this, it looks like everybody uses a hoist, but I didn't have one and, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who want to do this who don't have a hoist in the garage. So with the rear of the shell on the rotisserie, I tied an engine crane to the front and the engine crane topped out and it wasn't quite high enough to get the shell off the chassis. I ended up needing to stack blocks under the shell and shorten the engine stand and and it was terribly stressful and, and you need a unusually large garage like this to be able to do this. I also had trolley jacks under the chassis and was wheeling that out of the way at the same time. It was slow and hard, especially since I was doing it on my own. Something that would have made this easier would have been uh, the rotisserie being a high enough stand so that the engine crane would roll underneath its legs. Now a huge problem that could be avoided was there's a center post between the front and the rear of the rotisserie you can see underneath the car running along the floor. I could not fit that while the engine crane that was holding the front of the shell was in use. So I, I fit the front of the rotisserie up to the front of the shell, removed the engine crane, stacked these concrete blocks in here to remove the rear of the rotisserie so that I could then fit that center post. Um, you could design around needing to do this because this was as stressful as it looks. I purchased this rotisserie second hand and homemade from someone who had used it to finish their restoration but I'd call it unfinished because I found it, felt it had so many problems. The first thing I did was fit these uh, trailer winches, which are nice and effective, but I just wouldn't trust them with safety. So I've drilled a hole right through the uh, post and just put a big bolt through it, and that's going to make it very safe. I don't feel you need to raise or lower the shell much. You just need to get it up there and get it secure and then the rotation gives you access to everywhere you want to work. When I bought this rotisserie, there was no way to lock the rotation in. I actually, I don't think the previous owner used rotation. He just elevated the car. All I've done is drill some holes in the brake disc, and there's a, uh, there's a hole in the hub, a bolt hole in the hub, where a, a nice high tensile steel bolt can go through, and that's, that's adequate. And I've only done this on one end of the rotisserie, it would probably be more solid if I did it on both. Another great challenge fitting a shell to a rotisserie is balancing it. Um, you can see it's adjustable by the arms that come out of the uh, spindles, but finding a balance is still very difficult. On the rear of the car, where I've fitted the rotisserie, is actually pretty close to its center of gravity. It was a lot more difficult on the front of the car, where I've mounted the rotisserie to the bottom of the shell. When the mount to the rotisserie is so far away from the shell's center of gravity it creates a, a leverage effect and so a lot of stress on the rotisserie when it's off balance and you're rotated at 90 degrees like I am here. I was trying to adjust the balance by backing off these large bolts here and bumping it around with a hammer. This was a mistake. It got loose, it got ugly, I went to over tighten the bolts, the thread started stripping, I got nervous and grabbed the welder. These triangular brackets here make a lot of sense, they're very useful, they make it very solid. If they could be adjustable, this would be a very nice tool. The best way to do this would have been to have the car in its upright position but still on blocks or on your hoist, fit up the rotisserie so that it would be, the car would be top heavy and so wanting to tilt in either direction. Loosen this join here and just raise your rotisserie, tighten it up and check it for balance again. I don't think you needed 100% balance because when you have a stopper to stop the rotation, that off balance is going to lean on it. This triangle section here is overkill. The first time I fitted up the rear rotisserie to the shell, uh, 
I picked it up. It wasn't com- the car wasn't completely stripped, and there was some flex in the legs, the rotisserie. Um, so it needed some more steel, but this this was completely overkill. Uh, what it, this does is this reduces the uh, range of of lowering that the uh, rotisserie can do. So you actually, I actually had to pick the car up quite high before I could fit it to the rotisserie. Before attempting use of the rotisserie. I tacked in the repair patches around the back window because I thought that should be done when the car was bolted down onto the chassis and on brand new bushes. I also had the chassis up on blocks to ensure that it wasn't uh, made crooked by uneven suspension or uneven tyre pressure. So days of work have gone into this rotisserie and I ended up finding that the, the floor of the car really didn't need a lot of work. It mostly just needed a clean. It had a couple of holes you could almost get a pencil through. Well, it was an experience. I'm going to learn from it. 